get Adam Schefter back in here. And Adam, what do we know about Trayvon Diggs? Laura, Trayvon Diggs suffered a knee injury during the early portion of practice during a one-on-one -on -one drill, and the MRI has confirmed that he indeed has a torn ACL. It's a devastating blow to the Dallas defense, to Trayvon Diggs, who this summer signed a five-year, $97 million extension. He had been off to a strong start this season, knocking down passes to Jets receivers, the Giants offensive players, as well as stripping the ball loose. And Trayvon Diggs was one of the primary playmakers on this team. Suffered the injury early in practice, was on crutches afterwards. They did the MRI, and it showed exactly what doctors thought, a torn ACL, a massive midweek blow to the Dallas Cowboys defense. Yeah, just brutal to think about. More on that coming in just a moment. But first, Adam, want to get the latest on Joe Burrow. Oh, sorry, we're actually going to do this instead, and then we'll go back to Adam. Uh, so as you guys hear this, I mean, first of all, let me just say, we all feel <laughs> terrible for Trayvon Diggs. I, I want to make sure that is very clear. This is horrible to do. Um, but as you go ahead and think about what's going on for these Cowboys going down the stretch here, Marcus, I'm curious, are they still contenders for you to be the NFC champions? We, we had thought on this show and on many other shows that they might make it to the Super Bowl. Uh, absolutely. They're still contenders. It got it got harder. Uh, don't get me wrong. It got absolutely harder. And I don't know if Dan and RC misconstrued what I said about replacing Trayvon Diggs. You just hope that it doesn't become a liability yeah. like it became last year where people just needle you opposite of Stephon Gilmore. Remember, too, this is this is a great job by this front office. OK, because you still have a number one corner in the building. Last year, they didn't couldn't have afforded this at all without Trayvon Diggs. Stephon Gilmore still has a lot in the tank, still can play at a very high level. So the person opposite of him, obviously, is going to get a lot of attention, thinking, like RC said, either Bland or Jordan Lewis, who is uh, back healthy. So hopefully those guys' familiarity, the time that they've played, that you don't become so deficient away from your number one cornerback, which is now yeah. Stephon Gilmore. Yeah, absolutely. Stephon Gilmore steps into the spot, and he was already the left corner, which is going to get a lot of footballs anyway, especially being on the opposite side of Trayvon Diggs. This doesn't make this team a team that can't contend for a Super Bowl. What this does change for me is I thought this team could be historically great. I thought this team could be Baltimore Ravens 2000, 2002, um, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I thought this team could be 2008 uh, Pittsburgh Steelers, 2000, uh, 2013 LOB. I thought this was that sort of good defense, that sort of talent, Hall of Famers in different spots and different levels all over this defense. I believe it does change that because there are going to be plays that Trayvon Diggs would have made that now puts you on the attack that other people can't, can't make. Yes, they'll have somebody out there that can cover. They'll have somebody out there that can tackle, that can play with the pressure they create. But someone who is a game changer like he is makes all the difference in what your team can historically be or be historically. I think that piece has changed, but this is still one of the top one or two teams in the entire NFC. Yeah, when you think about um, just the opponent perspective, Dan, and especially from the quarterback standpoint, you said earlier, you know, some of these guys that you played against or the people play against in the past, you just wouldn't even throw to that side of the no field. Doubt. How do you think these other teams now knowing that Diggs isn't going to be out there are going to approach this? So I have it written down here. Like, think Philadelphia, well, A.J. Brown. That was the Stephon Diggs matchup. Washington, Terry McLaurin, the Stephon Diggs matchup. Right. Brandon Ayuk, Chris Olave, Cooper Cup. You know, there, there's these teams, Amon Ross St. Brown. So that, like, in many ways, you went into that game, if you were Dallas going, they got, those are their number ones, and we got the guy that can at least go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. In many people's eyes, shut them down, lock them mm -hmm. up, and that frees up your whole defense. Now, if you're Philadelphia, you're sitting there going, well, we have the advantage. If you're New Orleans, we're saying, well, we have the advantage. And I know the front is still a massive piece to this, but whenever you had those elite fronts, matched with an elite cover guy, it was impossible to play against. Mm. Like, it was impossible. Your, your number two and number three receiver had to go off in such a fashion that like, your, your, your chances of winning were, were so uh, lessened because of it. And that's why I think it, just knowing who they're going to have to play against and some of the talent on the right. outside, it changes everything. Yeah, you're going far ahead, uh, playoff 
territory. But I do want to tell people coming up in the near future, they have the Cardinals this week, the Patriots, the 49ers after that, the Chargers.